Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. I'm Josh. And I'm Aaron. And we're back with another Totally Blind Head to Head where we react to the pours and the prices before we find out what we're sipping. If it's an available product, is it worth the money? If it's hard to find, is it worth the hype and the hunt? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. We are not professional whiskey tasters, but we will randomly select one of these pairs at random and give you our completely honest opinions on it without any hype or bias of the labels. You'll see us work our way through the tasting and ultimately give each pour what we call a real world score, which is based on what we find out during the blind tasting, as well as on the price and the availability, and most importantly to us, whether we would actually spend our own money on it. If you like blind tastings like this, go ahead and give this video a like, subscribe to the channel. That Blind tastings is what we do here. That's our bread and butter. And if you wanna get a little bit more involved with the channel instead of just watching, you wanna maybe do some blind flights and blind tastings with us, you can check out the video description below for a link to our Patreon community. We've got all kinds of fun stuff over there. We also do giveaways and have two bonus episodes every week over there. And if you're just feeling like you want some Stuff and Whiskey merch, go ahead and head over to stuffandwhiskey.com and we've got some dad hats, t-shirts, sweatshirts, all kinds of things. All right, let's run our randomizer and see which one of these pairs we're tasting today. Didn't hit it, did I? Nope. Wait. Missed again. Nope. What's happening? There we go. <laughs> ten. <laughs> 10. That's nine, so ten's gonna be okay, the first one right down here. there. We're gonna get these poured. We'll be right back with our first impressions on glass one. Let's get into glass one. Cheers. This smells like fruity earth. Yeah, it's really sweet, but it is tempered with some oaky earthiness. It's really nice on the nose. I like it a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of flavor in the nose. Yeah, it doesn't seem <laughs> a lot of flavor in the nose. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of flavor in my nose. Like it, it tastes like something in my nose. Yeah, it doesn't seem super high proof. It doesn't seem super concentrated. Can't tell yet. It doesn't seem super complicated, but it is very pleasant on the nose. Let's get into the palate. Okay. It's good. Like, I don't have a lot of like notes yeah. to say, but it's no. very nice to drink. It, kind of like apple oaky sweetness. Yeah, apple oaky sweetness. And it's really like it feels good. It's not watery. Yeah, it's kind of simple. It's kind of soft. It's very, again, pleasant. That's yeah. That's what I glad it's it's a it's a very gentlemanly pour in the fact that like or it, would hold the door, pour. it would hold the door open for you. Like you might not be super attracted to it. <laughs> But Sorry. he'd be really I'm nice like, on paper. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, I, as I was saying it, I was wanting to reel the words back into my mouth. Okay, like, we need to go there. It's nice. This is the guy that stacks chairs at church. This is what oh, this is. Oh, yeah. It's, it's good. It's not anything mind bending or mind blowing. It's just good, solid bourbon. It seems like bourbon to me. I'm not saying it's bourbon. I'm just saying it seems like bourbon. Yeah. Sweet. Oaky, good, good, whatever. Yep. Let's go into glass two okay. and see what we're working with. Okay, this is nice too. Yeah, they both smell really good. This smells a little bit deeper, like a little darker than the first one, but very similar. Yeah, it smells darker, but younger. Like the oak isn't quite as influential on it, but the flavor profile, or at least on the nose, the flavor profile that is there is a darker, flavor profile. Yeah. Let's get into the palate and see what's up. Again. Oh, wow. Good. It, it. That's good. That's real good. I'm so confused. It, it stings a little bit like it's a little higher proof than I expected it to be. Yeah. That comes across darker on the palate. It comes across more syrupy, less oaky. The oak influence isn't there, but you're getting a little bit more baking spices. The sweetness is similar, but a little on the darker side. Mm -hmm. Like it's still kind of glass one was more like apple oaky sweetness. Glass two is a little bit more baking spices yeah. and maple syrup and brown sugar. I'm not getting maple syrup, but I'm getting more brown sugar probably. Yeah, I would say. But yeah, these are both these are both good solid yeah. pours. I would put these in my kind of easy sipper category, but they're pushing a lot of flavor for their yeah. what is seemingly a lower proof point. And I would, but I would say if I had to guess, because I'm so 
good at this. Yeah. This is higher proof or it drinks a little higher proof. I'd say so. Glass one is a little bit more soft. Mm -hmm. Glass two is a little bit more flavorful. A little more heat in the back yeah. of my throat. Yeah, I would say glass one is like a, a slightly limper handshake than you would be comfortable with. Like... Yeah. Ever so slightly. Ever so slightly. Ever and so slightly. And glass two is like, it's a nice handshake. It's it like might a be, good. It might be a little bit more firm than It's like, like a good, no, it's not too firm. No, it's not too no, firm. No, it's not You're like right. a high proof, like no. bowl you over. It's just like glass two is a good firm handshake. Glass one's a little softer than you like. With that said, we do need to spend some time with both of these pours. We need to clear our palates. We need to start with glass two, go back to glass one. That can absolutely change things. So we're going to do that now. And we'll be back with our full tasting thoughts after this. After spending some time with both these pours, what do you think? Let's start with glass one. Okay, so for me, glass one, thumbs up on nose, thumbs up on flavor, thumbs up on experience. Yep, same for me, Good. thumbs up across the board, yep. nose flavor experience, pretty solid pour across the board. Yes. With that said, let's get into glass two. Where are you at? Same thing, same. thumbs up all the way. Same, thumbs up across the board, yeah. nose flavor and experience. It is what it is. These were both really solid. They were pretty good. Both good. Yeah. Like for, really enjoyable for what they were. On glass one, my notes were good, solid, yum. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they were it was just good. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, amazing, but it also was just really enjoyable. Yeah. Um, and then for glass two, the nose, after I smelled it a few times, it made me somewhat reminiscent of stinky feet. There's like a slight stinky feet nose. In a good way. When she means that, a, she means it in a very endearing way. I do not mean an it in way. a good way. It, and so that which, almost made me like it more. <laughs> which begs the question of, it's not, it, it raises yeah. a lot of questions. Yeah. Nonetheless, for me, I said glass one on the nose. I said it was barrel aged apple juice. Yeah. But then you take the apple juice out of the barrel and then you add some white sugar like you're sweetening sweet tea. Mm -hmm. And then all that carried over to the palate with the flavors and it had all that plus some sweet oak. On the finish, I said it was lingering. It wasn't particularly oily. Neither of these were particularly oily. But they weren't particularly watery either. Right. They were right. just... They had good concentration of flavor for their proof point. I said glass one had a lingering finish. It did go slightly tannic, which if you're sensitive to tannins and like... What does that mean? Oak. Tannic? Like if you're sensitive to oak and wood okay. in, your, in your whiskey or wine and you get that tannic experience, it could be a little off-putting for you, but it is... It, that's not off-putting for me, and I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Glass two, I said, on the nose. Glass, by the way, glass two is my preference of these two. Same. Slightly. Slightly. They're they're very close, but glass two reminded me. You know that recipe? We'll put it in the description. The bourbon apple crisp Ooh. with vanilla ice cream on top. Glass two reminded me of that. It's a smoked bourbon apple crisp. It is so good. It's it's a very high maintenance recipe because you have to chop a lot of apples yeah however it's so good but it's it's apples it's brown sugar it's bourbon reduced it's smoked it you put some vanilla ice cream on top that's glass too it's mm -hmm. so good on the nose yeah. on the palate that carried over except you took that recipe of the bourbon apple crisp and you drizzled like chocolate sauce and caramel sauce on top of it Ooh. as well i'm not getting chocolate or caramel but oh. i did think so so good while these are both really good and i would I was telling you off camera, I'd be happy with either one of these. Yeah. I did have a preference to glass two. And I think for me, it was because glass two had a stronger flavor and I think it drinks higher proof than glass one. I don't know if it is higher yeah. proof. Slightly. But it drinks slightly. More flavorful. Ever so slightly. Yeah. Not off-putting, but just just a little bit, just like a little bit more. Yeah. And I, I think I prefer that, but they're both really good. It's interesting you used to say that because on the experience for glass two, I put really good for a seemingly lower proof pour. Yep. I said I'd like to pay about 30-ish bucks for both of them and that I would like to have both of them in our collection. I'd pay 40. 40 would be my limit yeah. on both of these. I'm walking out the door empty handed over $40. I'd pay 40. With they're, that, they're both enjoyable. Yeah. With that said, let's find out what we've been drinking. All right, let's find out the price first, okay. react to that, and then find out what we've been drinking. So, glass one is number 30, and glass two is number 29. I know I how much you like it <sighs> when the second glass is the lower number. It messes with my Why brain. Why can't it be in order? It messes with All my right, brain. So, we both preferred glass 
two, two. slightly. So what's the price on glass two, number 29? 50 bucks. Okay, it's a little more than we want to spend. I'm not hating on it for that price, but it's pushing okay. the absolute boundaries. It's good for me. I'm gonna tell you right now. If this is higher proof than I think it is, I would pay fifty dollars for it. Pushing if the it's, boundaries. If it's lower proof, if it's like a low proof pour, which I think it might be, fifty is pushing it. Okay, tell me glass number one, number thirty. Thirty-five. Okay, that's right where I said I was happy for paying. Yeah. So as close as these were, I would lean towards glass one, even though I had a slight preference towards glass because two. Because the price. A fifteen dollar difference, although fifteen bucks is fairly inconsequential, but, but if it's if something buying, I'm going to be doing regularly, if yeah. If you're saving fifteen dollars multiple times, yeah. Then you end up saving this, a bottle's worth. This would be my flavorful, low proof pour yeah. in the house. All right, let's find out what we're working with. So we both prefer glass two mm -hmm. so let's find out what glass one is number 30. 30. eagle rare really mm -hmm. glass one is eagle rare that is number 30. now that you're saying yeah one. now that yep. you're saying that yep i'm getting the great the great nerds of course you uh, are because now you know okay that's not fair what in the world's glass 29. do i take a guess no weller, i don't weller 12. really yep okay all right. Oh, this is okay. This is an interesting comparison then. All right. This was put in the pool for a reason. So we got a bottle of Weller 12. We paid $90 for it as part of a bundle oh that had two other products in it this that is we what wanted. We got in Illinois. Yeah. Okay. And so it was $90 for it was a $225 bundle that had National Barrel Company rye, the 100 proof small batch and something else um starlight the, the starlight apple brandy mm -hmm. so price wise the breakdown was 90 dollars for this we're never going to see 90 dollars for weller 12 in our market so we bought it for the channel to see so how the, good it was the retail price is 50 dollars. the yeah. msrp ballpark it used to be like 30 or 40. i think it's now like if you win it in a lottery in nashville you can get it for 50 or most places but it's really hard to get for that eagle rare wow 30, 30, 35, Isn't Eagle Rare kind 40 of hard bucks. to find as well? Yeah, they're, these are both hard to find. So oh. this is a little bit of a... Okay. The reason this matchup is in our blind sample pool is because these are both hard to find allocated products. If you can't find either of them and you get a chance to buy either one of them, are either of them worth a huge markup? And like we said, mm. much more than about 40 bucks, we're walking out without a bottle. Yeah. Like we because just don't. Because the proof is low. They're, yeah. They have good flavor. Although I will say, and I might be wrong on this, but I feel like I follow a couple of YouTubers in the UK and I feel like Eagle Rare might be a little bit more available in the UK. And in some markets it is. Yeah. Like we've got for, like Phil and Julie out in, at the bourbon van. Mm -hmm. They can get Eagle Rare. Like people in California can get Eagle Rare. Mm -hmm. Like other states can get it. We just can't in our market. We if, have to have a hookup or you, you have to have a really it, good timing. If you can get it in your market, I feel like at $35 yep. is a really good value. 10 years, 12 years, rye-based bourbon, weeded-based bourbon. You know, they're both from the same distillery. There okay. is a through line that's there, like a general sweetness and uh -huh. lack of like darker flavors. But the Weller 12 did bring a little bit more of that brown sugar vanilla that I tend to like more. It had just like a little bit stronger of a flavor too. Yeah. Just if, ever so slightly. And they're both 90 proof. Honestly, if both of these were sitting on a shelf in front of me and I could pick either one, I would pick the Weller 12 based only on the flavor profile. Same. But I am not paying $90 for this again if I can get this for <laughs> You did it once and that's enough. For $37.99. I'd be happy with this. Yeah. I'd be just fine. Like, yeah, fascinating matchup. Hopefully you enjoyed it as well. We need to talk about our consumer metrics, okay. our, our retail and consumer um, scores. Scores, that's what they're called. So retail is the pricing availability. The consumer score is whether we would buy it again or not if it were sitting in front of us at retail. Eagle Rare, in our, the this bottle cost us $37.99. Okay. It was like, Forty-one, two dollars out the door with tax. With tax, okay. Hard to find. You got to be in the right place at the right time, or you got to have a hookup. So for the retail part of the equation, you got to take that into consideration. Okay. It is from a major distillery. It is ten years old, ninety proof. Okay. 
Where are you at on retail and consumer scores? So the price is good, but the lack of availability in our market kind of hurts it for me. So I'm giving it just okay. Yeah, I think that's fair. And then it's on the shelf in front of you for 38 bucks. Are you walking yeah. out of the door with a bottle? Yes. Um, I struggle if I, if I want to give it two thumbs up because that I would. The price is really good and it's very delicious. Yeah. Um, I'm going to just give it just okay. I'm just going to give it one thumbs up. I mean, not just okay. I'm going to give it one thumbs up. Right, yeah. Um, Because if I can get it at $35, I would get it. Yeah. For me, I'm going to give Eagle Rare a just okay on the retail equation as well mm -hmm. because the availability is so limited in our market. But the price is really good for what you're getting. Mm -hmm. So I and think if it, we were in a different market, right? I would probably give it a little bit higher score. But because yeah. it's limited in our specific market, it's it's, it's dinged a little bit. Right. Will I buy Eagle Rare at forty bucks? Yeah, I'm buying at forty bucks. I'm not buying over forty bucks. But if I see it for thirty nine ninety nine, I'm gonna buy a bottle because I don't know when I'm gonna see the next bottle. Mm -hmm. But that's my limit at fifty or at forty bucks because we're with tax here in Nashville. We're at $44 out the door. I just don't think it's better than that. Above that, there's a, a bunch of other products I'd rather have. Agreed. With that said, let's get into Weller 12. Retail score, where are you at? Well, insanely difficult to find. It's a once a year release and you have to win it in a lottery or you're going to pay a secondary markup on it at about $250. <sighs> it is not a $250 whiskey. No, it's not, not even close. It's it, it it's is, it's forty bucks, maybe fifty tops. I do like it, and I would pay fifty dollars for it, but that's probably the max. Yeah, I pay fifty for it as a, like a nice low proof pour. So, but the availability is insanely difficult. Okay. So, retail score, price, and availability. Where are you at? Honestly, I'm gonna have to give it a thumbs down. Yeah, but you see it on the shelf in front of you for as a consumer for fifty bucks. Are yes. you buying it again? Yes, thumbs up. I am. Okay. If I if it's right there and I don't have to wait in line for it, I'm just yeah. getting it. Head, yes. Okay, I'm thumbs down on retail because the availability is so limited. But if I see it at fifty bucks, I am a thumbs up on mm -hmm. consumer score. Question: We paid ninety for this in a bundle. Would you pay ninety for it again? One no. more time. No, I would not. I wouldn't either. It's not worth that. No. With that said, let's get into who these are for, because this is a very interesting conversation. If you like low proof, like under 100 proof, and you like a lot of flavor, and you get an opportunity to buy either one of these bottles for no more than $50. At retail. Yeah. I would say they're worth a shot. Yeah. Like even Eagle Rare, I wouldn't pay more than 40 for it, and you said you wouldn't pay more than 40 for it, but if you've never tried it before and you get an opportunity to buy it at 50, you're not getting ripped off. Yeah. You're not I getting agree. ripped off. But at 60, you're starting to get ripped off. It's not a very Maybe. good $60 whiskey. It just depends on what you're willing to risk right. losing. Well, I would say when I say ripped off, what I mean is you're paying more for the rarity. Yes. And the fact that you're not going to be able to get your hands on it again rather than the quality of the whiskey that's in the bottle. Yeah. So it just doesn't really deliver much more than that. But if you do like low proof, it might it might be your calling card. Like it might be exactly what you want. I like it. It's enjoyable. It's a, like, I, yeah. again, I said good, solid, yum. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. I feel like it's old faithful. And then as far as Weller 12 goes, also very good. Yep. I think 225 or $250 is an insane amount of money to pay for the quality of the whiskey that you're getting in this glass. Yeah. It just does not live up to that at all. Well, especially for the lower proof. Right. It does drink higher than 90 proof, I think, though. But at, I mean, it is very flavorful. At 50 bucks, I'm I'm a buy all day. Oh. I'm a buy all day. Yeah, at 50 bucks, yes. At, at 60 bucks, because of the rarity, and I don't know if I'd see another one, I'd probably buy at 60. At any more than that, I'm out. I just like, no. if a store had this at 70 by itself, I just, I don't think I'm buying again. Yeah. Like, we'll, we'll, this isn't a bottle that we're going to reach for. We bought this all that bottle often. specifically to try it in head to head yeah, for the channel. Yeah. So these are both good, but not great pours. They're very solid for low proof pours. Yeah. They do kind of stand out a little bit against other 
competition in the 90 proof range? I would say if you are someone who consistently likes lower proof pours, they would be great. You specifically, and I'm becoming more accustomed to drinking higher proof on a more regular basis. So we yeah. don't think they're great, but if you like lower proof, if you're like a hundred proof is kind of your max, I would consider these great for, for 90 to hundred proof. Yeah. In that category. And it's worth noting, if you're watching this, if you're kind of new into bourbon and you've seen a lot of hype around both of these products, bourbon gets its flavor from age or proof. Mm -hmm. And you can get it in both, but usually you're going to get one or the other from most products. And in this case, you're getting a lot of flavor from the age, not so much from the proof, but you can get a very similar experience with like 100 proof rather than 90 mm -hmm. and a little bit less age and a lot lower price tag than what you might see either of these listed for. That's fair, yeah. And a lot easier to find with a lot less hassle. That's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. If you've tried either of these, let us know. I know, I feel like I've, I've heard of a lot of people talking about Eagle Rare, so let me yeah. know what you think about Eagle Rare specifically. I'm, I'm really curious to see if anybody's tried both of them side by side, especially blind, what you think. Did mm. your experience line up with ours? I'd be very curious to hear that in the comments below. While you're down there, also click the little arrow to check out the description for the video. Down there, you'll find our email address. You can get in touch with us there if you have any questions. We try to respond to all comments here on the channel, but if you wanna get in touch specifically, hit the email address at stuffandwhiskey at gmail, gmail gmail.com. <laughs> and you can also get in touch with us down there if you wanna get more information on our charity fundraiser that we do every October. It's gonna be just around the corner. We're trying to do yep. some pre-planning for that. But if you wanna get involved, if you want more information, you can contact us there. And if you would like to donate a bottle to the cause for mental health, it's a big thing for us. It's something that if you're gonna tune into this channel and you're gonna give us some viewership, we're gonna use it to do some good in the world. So hit us up at stuffingwhiskey at gmail.com. And that's gonna do it for this week. Until next time, cheers. cheers. We're talking about handshakes and, and men. men holding doors open for you I'm gonna stand and up for this. stacking chairs at church. I know. <laughs> My fingers are so swollen. Why? I don't know. That sounds like a personal problem. I feel like <laughs> I can't get comfortable. Okay. This channel makes me so uncomfortable. Can you give me my scoring sheet, please? Oh, yeah. You need that, don't you? Yeah. It's like I've never done this before. Garlic knots versus cheesy breadsticks. Which one is your forte? Like, which one are you going for? Both. <laughs> no, you have to pick one. You can't have all the carbs. Probably garlic knots because- Over I'm cheesy a, breadsticks? Well, I'm about to eat cheesy breadsticks in pizza form. That's fair. Yeah, that's, and you I like, raise a good point. I like the garlic flavor. Yeah. So probably garlic knots. And garlic's healthy, so it's like a health food.